and we are back. I've just watched the first episode of season two of Rings of Power. I was very curious because you guys in the comment section have been very, uh, have had very different opinions on this. Uh, some of you were saying that it's way better and some of you were saying it's way worse. So I was very curious to see um, what the source of that discrepancy was. And I, I, I think I see it pretty clearly. I feel like the pacing in this first episode is much stronger for the most part than season one. Uh, most of the scenes flowed into one another in a logical way, with the exception of the Stranger and Nori scenes. Those are completely divorced from the rest of the plot still. Uh, but beyond that, usually it if someone was talking about Sauron and then we cut the Sauron and we did it, like it, it scenes flowed in a way that that made a little more sense. So in that way, it definitely felt like a step in the right direction. The actual content of the episode, uh, has some issues. So we, we open with a flashback to Sauron after Morgoth's defeat. And the first thing to notice is Adar has been recast. I'm not, uh, up to date on why that is. Uh, I was disappointed by that because I, that was one of the actors I liked. And so far, I'm not crazy about the gentleman who's replaced him, but I, I'm sure the reasoning has nothing to do with... I, I'm sure it's production stuff, so I'm not going to uh, count it against the show. The actor who's playing this version of Sauron, I am strongly not crazy about his performance. It was giving... Um, <laughs> the the emperor and gladiator vibes to me and not in a good way like he felt very like insecure and he gave off like insecure middle management and kind of prissy and and not very powerful you didn't get a sense not, not he did a the cool ice thing like the when he died and like the I, that visual effect was very cool i enjoyed that but just his presence and the way he talked to the orcs did not feel powerful and I think that was intentional by the writers. I think they're they're going for that. I'm not sure that's a good decision. It doesn't. It it didn't make him intimidating, <laughs> which is potentially an issue if this is your antagonist. Um, so I was not crazy about that at all. Following his journey from his death to uh, when Galadriel finds him on the ship in season one, when I think about it, just as a show. I enjoyed that a lot. It's this weird Venom. <laughs> it was, the show becomes like Venom and uh, if I don't think about him as Sauron and just as like some dark overlord that gets overthrown by his orcs and then has to go on this. The story is cool and I like that. Uh, when I'm thinking about it divorced from, from Sauron and Tolkien and all that, that I think was actually very uh, fun and, had a, and flowed in a consistent fashion. Um, as a Sauron interpretation, um, I'm not I'm not crazy about it. But when watching it for its own as its own thing, I I enjoyed those scenes. What Sauron's whole deal is and like what his goals are is not a hundred percent clear. But I think that's intentional, and I don't mind. He's like later in the episode, he kind of has this plan to go to Adar, and then he's in prison with Adar and. I'm not really sure what the goal is there. I think because the only reason to do it that way is to find a way to free the people. So I guess he's doing that for the people of the Southlands. Uh, because you could just... <laughs> I, I'm not sure being tortured to get the, to, to give that information to Dar was 100% necessary. Um, I, I liked the the wolf like uh, warg scene just because it's a nice a nice nod to sauron's connection to wolves and werewolves and whatnot i thought i enjoyed that i am concerned about the future of the show if you're going to keep throwing him in prison uh like i assume they're gonna have to do the the numenor plot differently now because they threw him in jail for 24 hours in numenor last season he has a whole like torture prison scene t uh this episode i mean are they gonna do another prison scene when he in the future with with Numenor I just uh it just feels like that that will feel re repetitive are they going to change that part of his story to not make it repetitive I'm I'm concerned because I feel like they might have just misplaced uh 
this. It feels like he should have the Sau Sauron being in chains and all of this stuff should should be later. I'm I'm, I'm flagging it as a point of concern. After the uh, we get background on Sauron, we cut to Galadriel chasing Elrond. And with no context as well. and we find out that he's taken the rings and that he wants to destroy them because it might they might be corrupted by Sauron, which is strange since these are the one rings that weren't. But there the, I my assumption is that this season is going to be about purifying the rings. I think that's the, the goal. I, I think that's the direction they're going with. I'm not sure I'm crazy about that because I, I assume they did this because just almost like a reference to previous material, because they love doing that. They, they love it, it has to be really similar to what's come before so they're like oh the one ring was very was was, was a temptation and, and kind of dark we need to make these rings a temptation and kind of dark I'm not I'm not crazy about that decision uh but we'll see where where that goes um the whole Elrond chase sequence I feel like they should not have started there because the drama is not the chase scene with the horses. That's not, that's really not the exciting part. The ex it would be exciting if we knew the context, but at the time of watching it, we didn't quite know the context. But the scene before that, that's never, that, that they don't film, that they don't show, is where the drama really is. Is Elrond, who believes these rings might be might be cursed, just gonna steal, steal these masterworks from his friend, who they just made, steal them and to go to destroy them. That's the drama of him making that decision, because that's a huge decision. But they, they don't film that. That That is the drama. They start with them already running, where he's already made that decision. Um, and also the chase would feel more intense if we know that he has the rings and they might get destroyed. And there's a that, that I think that, that was a missed opportunity dropping that. I think that was a crucial scene. That chase ends, we go to Gilgalad, and Gil, and Gilgalad demands the ring, and... Um, Elrond refuses and jumps off a cliff. Now, I know the writers thought they were very clever because I'm sure they think think of that as a reference to Elrond's mother, Elwing, jumping uh, attempt, her suicide attempt off a cliff with Silmaril. Uh, look, cute, cute reference. I'm uh, not crazy about that. It felt very stupid to do. Elwing was trying to die. Elrond is not. It, it, it seems foolish to jump off a cliff. And he just magically survives this, um, which is fine. Whatever he's an elf, uh, fine. Whatever, but it it doesn't. It feels very that 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 whole scene was not not great. I I'm not crazy about it. Um, no. And the thing is, all of this, all of this is kind of pointless because he does. They end up getting the rings, and they put on the rings, and the and the tree re regrows. All of this was kind of pointless because at the end of the episode, we're basically where we started. They, they made the rings. You, you could have just cut all of that out and then be like, we have the rings, and then they and then they cut to them putting on the rings at the opening of this episode. This entire plot was unnecessary. The only reason they put it in is they realized they did not introduce Círdan, and he kind of was important for this part of the story, so they're like, oh, we need to figure out a way to put Círdan in the story. Right? Okay, I'm not sure you needed this entire subplot to do that. The actual introduction of him just in the boats and stuff without any of Elrond's, like, shenanigans, I thought was, um, fine. Also, in these sequences, they send a lot, they say, we gotta send a letter to Celebrimbor informing him that Halbrand is Sauron. And the way it's shot, you're like, wow, this letter is totally going to be lost in transit, or come too late, or something, because... Uh, it, it's it's it feels almost soap opera like the way it's like oh this is totally uh, not gonna <laughs> this is not going to come come into his hands in a smooth uh, problem free manner uh, but that was that was funny um, at the end the the elves put on the rings and everything blooms or whatever and it's kind of shot like they are like there's a weird effect on them we'll see where that goes um. There, there's this sort of like, did he touch the rings? Did he curse the ring? I, he didn't touch the rings, but he did touch the the dagger that's metal was used in the forging of the rings. So them being like, oh, he never touched it. It's it's perfectly fine. It's not actually true. So it's very possible that they are corrupted based on this story. 
Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Then what else? Then there's Nori and the stranger, which nothing really happened. It's just them wandering around in the desert. They threw in Poppy at the end. It's so odd because if they wanted her in season two. Why didn't she go? She's coming in almost randomly. Like it, it felt very odd. Like they felt like they made a mistake in leaving her behind the writers. Uh, it's either that or this is not Poppy and this is like an illusion wizard. Um, I almost hope that's the case because that would make this whole thing make sense. But it, that's the only thing that really happened. They just walked around in the desert. Uh, and then every time it cut to them, it was very jarring. Sometimes like scenes that were at night, we would cut to them and it would be a day. It's just that every time we cut to them, the pacing was killed. Um, I still stand by my belief that all of the Nori stranger stuff should be been clumped together in one episode and not be woven into everything because it's not necessary for them to be included in the flow of the story because they were irrelevant to the rest of the story. Have like one episode dedicated to them. It would flow way better. Yeah, that's 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 how I feel about that. I'm very excited to see the Eastlands because they, there's a lot of room to do whatever they want. And I when they're separated from Tolkien, it's easier for me to enjoy uh, story. I think my opinion then on it is it's it's not nothing really happened this episode. Um, <laughs> the thing that happened at the end could have happened at the beginning of this episode and it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Uh, kind of all the plots didn't, nothing really happened. Um, uh, un oh, and, and Halbrand, Sauron has gone to see Celebrimbor. That I'm excited about because that's what I was excited about when this show was first announced. So we'll see what they go with this because it, it really does feel like they realize they did this out of order and they're like, oh, we need to bring him back to here because he hasn't finished doing all the things he needs to do with Calabrimbor. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, uh, I'll, I haven't watched episode two yet. I'm going to go do that. Uh, see you on the next one.